Good morning, everyone. A lot of the times my videos on this channel consist of me going to see or do a handful of interesting or beautiful things in a day. And I am going to go see and do a handful of interesting things today, but the focus of today is more of the journey rather than the destinations. And by that I mean I'm going to drive a scenic road. And it's not only scenic, but I've, I've seen it called a couple of different interesting things. I've seen it called the road from hell, but my favorite, what was it called? A demon disguised as a road. I thought that was a pretty great turn of phrase for this. So the road in question is the road to Atlanta. I'm in the mountains pretty close to Boise, the capital of Idaho, and Atlanta is an old gold mining town in the mountains. And uh, this road is about 65 miles of, of washboarded dirt road. It's supposed to be a pretty rough, pretty slow road. And I've never been here before, I've never driven the road before, so I'm excited. Behind me here you can see a dam. That's called Arrow Rock Dam. And the lake behind it is called Arrow Rock Reservoir. And apparently it's called Arrow Rock because there was a rock here that the Native Americans would ride their horses past or walk past. And there was a, a, a crevice or a cleft in the rock and they would shoot their arrows and try to, try to make it into the cleft in the rock as a test of their accuracy. So that's why it's called Arrow Rock. Pretty area, but we're going further up the road here. The road curves around here and then goes past the dam over this way. Let's get back in the car and start this drive of 60 something miles along this pretty uh, pretty rough dirt road. I think the road is, it's not like a, a high clearance or four wheel drive road, it's just a bad regular road, I think. Again, I haven't driven it myself, I don't know exactly the state of the road, but it has a reputation for being just a, a bad road. I've been driving for about an hour and a half and I figured it was time to get out and stretch my legs a little bit. I think I'm just under halfway with the drive, halfway to Atlanta. And I've stopped at this particular place because there's something terrible right here. Someone has abandoned this old Volvo out here and it's been shot up and dismantled and destroyed kind of a blight on the landscape in this otherwise really beautiful area. So this road, for most of its length, after passing by the, the reservoirs, parallels the middle fork of the Boise River. The Boise is a, a central river to this part of Idaho and it has multiple forks. This road is the middle fork, or this road follows the middle fork. And right now the river is a little bit high and a little bit off color. It's more brown than I think it normally is because of the, the snow melt, it's, it's runoff season. But uh, let me show it to you. It's just a beautiful mountain river. And you see all kinds of, I guess, river terrain or, or the, the character of the river changes as you drive along it. Sometimes it's kind of hemmed in in a narrow canyon and it's deep and there are rapids and cliffs on the sides. Other times it's, it's wider, it's broader, it's shallower, it's, uh, it looks more calm. And there are also just a ton of campsites right on the river, free dispersed campsites. I've also passed a couple of established campgrounds, but for me, I like the dispersed camping where there's you know, there are no facilities, but there's also no one else around. You don't have neighbors right next to you. And uh, just tons and tons of riverside campsites. I'll stop 
between here and Atlanta, I'll stop a couple times and show you some of the highlights. Another highlight of this drive is that there are about half a dozen hot springs along this road. Now, filming hot springs is tricky. First of all, um, you know, it, it's just weird to film people bathing in any form, especially as just like a, a lone guy. It's a weird thing to do. Uh, I passed one hot spring and there were several cars parked at the turnout. I'm gonna be passing several, several more up here. If I pass by one with no cars there, then I, I'll stop and, and take a dip and show you the, the spring so you guys can see it for yourselves. But anyway, having a great time. The road isn't too bad. I mean, it's, it's washboarded and there are potholes, but I've driven way, way worse roads. So having a great time. Also, before I leave, I noticed that there are hundreds, maybe even thousands of these little mounds on the ground. What are these? Are these for ants? What are these for? Someone let me know. They look like little crab holes, crab houses, but I doubt that's what they are. So let me know if you have an idea. They're pretty small. Here's my shoe. As I was driving along, I looked over across the river and saw this. It's a little hot spring waterfall. Flowing directly, falling directly into the river. You can see steam rising from that whole little hill. That entire little hill is steaming. Maybe at times of low water, you'd be able to cross over there and, and visit that spot, but now, not a good idea. Here's another great campsite kind of surrounded on all sides by a bend in the river. And that drone footage you just saw was me parked like right here. You can drive out all the way out to here to be right next to the water, but it's a little bit soft and sandy. I didn't want to get the car stuck. But as I was flying the drone, I noticed a circular pool right by the edge of the river. And usually that means one thing, a hot spring, at least a, a pool that someone has dug to mix the the hot water from the spring with the cool water from the river to make it more uh, more so that you don't get boiled alive in the very hot water coming from, from the earth. Okay, so we have river water coming in from that side and going out from this side. Let me feel the temperature here. It's warm. I mean, that's that's definitely warmer than, uh, than the river water. That's not really warm enough for me to warrant changing into shorts and, and trying it out. Well, I think this would be an awesome place to camp, whether it is in the forest where I'm parked or on this uh, little, oh, I was gonna say whether you're parked in the forest or on this little gravel bar, either one would be uh, a good place to camp. But I don't think it'd be worth camping here for that, that, uh, that hot spring. I looked over, and I saw two little bubbling and steaming pools right next to, like right in front of me. Right here. And then there's another, what looks like a soaking pool right there. I'll go check that out in a second. But this one, you can see it's steaming in the cool morning air here. It might be too hot. Ooh, that's nice. That is nice. The downside is that there are hundreds of dead floating flies, or other, they're not flies, some sort of winged insect in here. But if you were to, <laughs> to clean this out, that'd be a nice little pool. Let's go check out this other one right on the water. That's, that's, a, that's an okay temperature. Warm, not hot. Again, probably not worth soaking in. 
Awesome place to camp, mediocre place to soak, but just a beautiful area. Having a great time. There's room for several cars. There are several campsites here and you could bring the whole posse out or you could just have it all to yourself. I've now parked off of this little side road. The main road is across the river over here. You can see the river right there along with some signs directed at anglers to be aware of what they're catching. As the sign here says, we are in bull trout country and bull trout are, they're not endangered, but they're a threatened species of trout. There are actually quite a few of them in Idaho. You are allowed to fish for them and catch them in Idaho, but you can't keep them. You can't harvest them, you can't eat them. Um, in other states, you're not even allowed to, to actively fish for them. But anyway, I've parked here to go try to find another hot spring. Um, I'm the only car here. I don't know if the hot spring is any good. You know, hot springs, wild hot springs like this are tricky from year to year, from season to season. They can vary quite a bit. On Google Maps, this had five stars with a grand total of two reviews. So not super uh, well traveled, I think. So the first one that I've come across is right here. You can see a pipe piping water into that that metal tub. This also might be uh, a soaking pool dug out of the, the riverbank. I think there are more, so let's keep exploring the area. That is very cold. Unfortunately, there's too much cold water coming in from the river at this time of year. This little rivulet right here coming down from the hillside over here, this is warm water and this is warm water and they both converge right here. And right where they converge, like right here, this is warm, but basically everything else is cold. This is all too cold to soak in, unfortunately. Let's go back to that metal tub and inspect that a little bit closer. Let's see. Ooh, that's nice. Okay. I'm going for a soak. It's good. Well, that was fantastic. I sat in there for, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. Just had a nice quick little soak and uh, the temperature was perfect. It was like, I mean, it was bathtub water. It was very nice and warm and really enjoyable overall. Let's walk back to the car, keep driving. I think I'm 15 or 20 miles whoa, from Atlanta. Oh, and one more thing, these seat covers that I have on both front seats here, uh, my wife also has them in her car. These are great, they're pretty cheap, they're from Amazon, and if you find yourself getting wet often, like if you go to hot springs, or if you go to the lake, if you go fishing, whatever, these will protect your seats from getting wet and nasty. I'll put a link to these in the video description if you wanna learn more and check those out on Amazon. Where I am now is an unplanned stop. I didn't know this was here, but I, as I was driving along the road, which I think you might be able to see behind me there through the trees, I looked over and I saw what looked like huge piles of gravel, like mountains or ridges of gravel, except this isn't gravel. 
These are these are huge rocks, much bigger than gravel. It's just that they are, you know, the color of gravel just scaled up. This, I think, is what's left over from dredging, from dredging the river over here. So dredging is when there's a basically a big floating boat, and on that boat, a gold production factory. A dredge will will anchor itself in a river valley and basically chew up all of the ground in the river and alongside the river, chew it up, bring it onto the dredge, spit out all of the, the bigger rocks and everything. That's what these are. These are the, the cast out, cast aside pieces of the, of the riverbed here. And then it would further, you know, sift and process the gold in the earth that it chewed up. And so these are kind of like, I can't really tell from here, but I think usually these are like scallop shaped ridges and they're made by the, the, the pattern of the, <laughs> the conveyor belt that spits these things out. Anyway, I want to confirm th that that is the case. And so I want to fly the drone here and take a look at these big ridges of, of giant gravel that were cast aside when looking for gold in this valley here. Seems like these last 10 or 15 miles of the road to Atlanta are taking me just forever because there are so many interesting things to see. As I was driving along the road here, I, uh, I saw this little cable and a cart strung across the river. This cart, to be more specific. That would be a harrowing little journey. I assume that's for a mining claim to get over to a, to a mining claim on the other side because there's a sign here attached to the tree, nailed to this tree that talks about a mining claim. Not sure if it would be worth it. Actually looks kind of fun, but there's no way I'm going to try to try to get in there. That is not a wise move. And just across from the river and the cable and the cart and the mining claim where I've parked there's a really nice campsite. I'm parked kind of at the front end of it, but you can see a fire ring back there. And it's right next to this other creek that comes in to meet the river. Again, just tons and tons of campsites along this road. And finally, after about six hours of driving, which of course included a lot of stops and, and uh, side trips and everything like that, but still, six hours after starting off this morning, I've arrived in Atlanta. The town itself, there's really not much to it. There's a little library, there's a forest service ranger station, there's a fire station, and then lots of little, uh, interesting little miners cabins old little little houses little buildings interesting place i don't have a whole lot to say about the town itself uh what you just saw with the the car mounted footage that's about all there is to atlanta but there is one thing that i want to show you that's straight ahead of me here rising above town is this really prominent and impressive mountain right here it's called Greylock mountain and it has an interesting story behind it. As I've mentioned, Atlanta was a mining town, a gold mining town, and not just in Atlanta, but all over Idaho, Chinese miners were brought in, Chinese laborers were brought in to work the mines. And the original name of this mountain that's covered in gray rock was Gray Rock Mountain, but the Chinese immigrants couldn't say that, they couldn't say gray rock, and so it's, it 
became Greylock, Greylock Mountain. I don't know if that's an apocryphal tale or if that's a real thing. I did read it in multiple, uh, from multiple places, so who knows, but interesting story. Grey Rock or Grey Lock, it's an appropriate name for an impressive mountain over there. And there's another hot spring just down the road over here, like a, a few hundred feet in that direction, so let's go head over that way, see what it's like. Well, here it is. Doesn't look super appealing, but let's go test the temperature of the water. That's actually very nice. That's a nice temperature. There's just a ton of algae in it. That's too bad. Let me go check out the, the far end over here, see if that's any clearer. Still a nice temperature, but still very full of algae. If you were to, you know, sit down in that, your entire body would just be covered in that algae. It's not, not super pleasant. That was called Atlanta Hot Spring, and I, I've driven a little bit further down the road and parked, and I'm walking to the final hot spring of the day. It's called Chattanooga Hot Spring. And, uh, you know, these names, Chattanooga, Atlanta, these are southern names, and uh, a lot of the early miners in this area were southern. And the town here was called Atlanta because at the time of its founding, they had heard incorrectly that uh, the Confederate troops had just won a big battle in Atlanta uh, versus the Union troops. Uh, this was again during the Civil War and uh, it wasn't accurate but the name stuck. Atlanta, Chattanooga, there are other southern names for various things in this area. These hot springs are reported to be right on the river, at least that's what I thought. And again this is the middle fork of the Boise here, very clear in this area which makes sense i mean there are just hundreds of tributaries downstream that have been uh filling it with with runoff very pretty up here though i don't think i mean i think this might be a soaking area right here but i think the real hot spring is actually this right here there's this little waterfall going into this pool right here. I don't know how hot this is. Maybe this is too hot, if it really is a truly hot spring. This is one of those places where it's so steep that you wanna, you wanna grab onto the plants as a, as a handhold. Okay, I think that was the worst of it. Wow, this is beautiful, these little, Hot trickles streaming out of the hillside here. Some over here. More right here and over here. The million dollar question is, what is the temperature of this beautiful pool right here? Let's see, let's find out. Oh, that's very nice actually. That's warm, not hot, but warm. Let's, uh, let's enjoy it a little bit. That is magical. What a find, what a magical little place, what a perfect cherry on top to what has been a really amazing day so far. Well, I don't know how it can get any better than that. I'm back at the car and uh, I think I'm just gonna end the video here. Usually I like to end the video at a campsite, but um, I'm actually gonna head back out of here tonight and I have to do some stuff in Boise. I have some errands to run in Boise. So I have like four hours of driving ahead of me. And then from there, I'm gonna be driving a few more hours to find a campsite. And so uh, I think it's best if I just end 
the video here. I'll put a picture of the campsite that I find. Uh, if I'm there while it's light, maybe by some miracle today or in the morning, I'll put a picture of it here. But overall, the road from hell was actually pretty awesome. I mean, again, any passenger vehicle can make that road. It's not that bad of a road. And uh, I enjoyed it. I had a great time. This area definitely warrants further exploration. It's still a little bit too early in the year, too early in the season to like, go on hikes from here, for example, or go fishing around here. There's a lot to do in this area. I'm at the southern end of the Sawtooth Mountains right now, and uh, just an incredible mountain range, but this isn't the right time of year to be here. Still too much snow, but uh, I'll be back. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your favorite part was. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you in the next one. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.